every now and then we hear yet another story about a nighttime collision at sea, maybe between a ferry and a yacht, or even between two large ships. Either way, the same question always comes up. Why didn't they see each other? Sure, if it's nighttime, it is harder to see things. You'll have noticed it yourself when you're driving at night, you need headlights to stand a chance of seeing anything. Yet, when you look at a ship at night, they don't have headlights. Ships actually turn off as many lights as they can to make themselves as dark as possible. But why? If headlights work for cars, why not for ships? Well, think about what a headlight actually is. It's just a source of light designed to emit photons which can bounce off objects and return to your eyes. Your brain then interprets them and tells you what you're seeing. Simple enough, but you need a light powerful enough to illuminate the area you're looking at. The power from the light is dispersed across the full width of its beam. Then, when the light hits an object, the small bit of its beam that hits the object is reflected back, but it is again dispersed meaning that only a tiny fraction of the original light gets back to you. That's fine in a car. You want a narrow-ish area right ahead of you, extending out far enough that you can take action to avoid the things that you see. Even at motorway speeds, around 100 meters should be enough. You're probably starting to see where I'm going with this. With a ship, 100 meters may not be enough to see your own bow, let alone to see far enough ahead to take any action. A large cargo ship, for example, needs more than a mile to stop. With two such vessels approaching each other, you're looking at needing at least two miles visibility to take action in time. You know how bright a car's headlight is, just think how much brighter a ship's headlight would need to be to have the same effect. Talking about things being brighter, this seems like an ideal moment to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests and get lost in creativity. As you can tell from my channel, I'm a huge fan of creativity. I like to bring maritime topics to life using animation to make everything easy to understand. When you join Skillshare, you could learn how to use the same software that I use to make these videos. Jake Bartlett is a motion designer and he's created this fantastic course, Animating with Ease in Adobe After Effects. You learn how to make this animated GIF of a house using the exact same techniques that I use when I'm animating scenes within my videos. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. My creativity has me making scenes like this with two ships approaching each other at night. We've already established that they don't use headlights to see each other. So what do they use? Well, they still use lights, but they're called navigation or nav lights instead. Every seaworthy vessel is fitted with nav lights. The idea is that they're arranged in a standardised distinctive way so that other vessels can not only see you, but also identify how you are moving. As nav lights are fitted to the target vessel, their power only needs to be sufficient to be seen by other vessels. Looking back at our diagram, if you have a light fitted here, rather than just relying on a tiny portion of reflected light, you can see how much easier it will be to see compared to using a headlight. But what about identifying their movement? Let's take this cargo ship as an example. She would show two masthead lights, the aft one being higher than the forward one. These immediately tell other ships in which direction she's moving. In this configuration, you know she's moving in this direction. And in this configuration, you know she's moving this way instead. But we can go further still. She also shows side lights. These are the coloured lights that you probably know about, red for port and green for starboard. Again, it reinforces which way she is traveling. In this direction, you can see her red light, meaning you can see her port side. And in this direction, you have the green or starboard light. Brilliant, but the lights can tell us even more than that. If we are looking at the vessel's port side and she turns towards us, watch what happens to the lights. As the masthead lights come in line, you can start to see both side lights. You know the other vessel is heading straight for you. Take a look from above and you can see that the only angle where you would see all those lights is from right ahead. The observant among you will spot that these lights don't go all the way around either. Instead, we have a single white light filling in this sector at the stern. What this means is that if you spot a single white light, one of the things it could be is a power-driven vessel viewed from astern. If she turns a bit, you might come on the cusp of viewing her side lights and mast headlights too. Looking from above, the only place where this is possible is along this line here. 
it's two points or 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam, the very definition of overtaking which I've taken straight from the coal regs. Of course, we've just looked at a power driven vessel here but there are countless variations on this arrangement. You can add extra masthead lights to indicate you're towing or show only side lights to indicate you're sailing. You can even modify your status by adding two all round red lights to show you're not under command, three all round red lights to show you're aground or make the middle one white to show that you're restricted in your ability to manoeuvre. See, nav lights tell you so much more than headlights ever could. They accomplish the basics, making the vessel show up against the dark sky, but in addition, they allow you to identify the vessel type, work out its aspect and see which way she's moving. All vital information when it comes to applying the collision regulations and working out which of you needs to give way to the other. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Don't forget we're on Patreon if you'd like to join our new community and discuss anything from these videos or hear about what's going on between uploads. Otherwise, we publish here on YouTube on the last Friday of every month. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.